Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. So today we're taking a look at this gorgeous laptop, the brand new Dell XPS 13 Plus. Now I've been using it for the past three weeks, but it should have been a little longer since I had to send my first unit back due to some quality control issues over at Dell. But luckily this one is working great now. First thing I wanna talk about though is the configuration that I got. So I got the base model chip, which is the Intel i5-1240P chip. I upgraded my RAM from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes and my base storage from 512 to one terabyte. I also opted for the full HD plus touch display. So yeah, this did come out a lot more expensive than the base model, but I only really urge you to upgrade the RAM from eight gigabytes to 16 everything else should be good. So we're still keeping that price somewhat cost effective, even though it's still quite pricey. But yeah, personally, I wanted to see how well the 1240p chip was going to hold up. And spoiler alert, after three weeks of use, I've edited multiple 4K videos on this and my experience has been excellent. Way better than I was expecting, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. Apple does get all the hype when it comes to laptops ever since the release of their M1 and their M1 Pro and Max chips from last year. And of course the M2 chips that were just released a few weeks ago. But no matter how good the MacBooks are, sometimes people don't wanna use a MacBook and that's fine. Intel has made quite a comeback with their 12th gen Alder Lake chips and the P-series chips that are inside the Dell XPS 13 Plus is no exception. So with all that being said, let's get started. So the design of this laptop is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's new, it's sleek, it's futuristic. And this platinum color is clean. Now the overall design language of the laptop is brand new, which what makes it so beautiful and aesthetic but I do understand that not all change can be good because a lot of people were concerned about some of the design choices saying that they were risky or just plain stupid. Their words, not mine. But after your adjustment period, honestly, it's a fantastic laptop. But let's talk about the actual design, right? So on the screen, you get those classics, ultra thin bezels that XPS laptops are known for. You get this brand new touch row of keys that have certain media functions. And if you press on the FN key, it also acts as your function row. And on the keyboard, you can see that it has a unique design as well. It extends all the way to the sides of the laptops, leaving no space for speaker grills. You get a fingerprint reader on the upper right side, just under the delete button. And as for the trackpad, as you can see, there isn't one visibly present, but there is one there. Don't worry about that. They didn't take away the trackpad. It just has this beautiful continuous glass design, which really makes this ultra clean and minimal. And I am obsessed. You do get one sticker on the laptop, which doesn't look too bad, but personally, I still would have preferred it if they didn't ship it with any. Now we do understand why a lot of people found some of the design choices here a little edgy, especially the touch row of keys. A lot of people were comparing it to the MacBook Pro with touch bar saying that it was just as unnecessary, but as somebody who actually used a MacBook Pro with a touch bar for over four years, I can say that it is nothing like the touch bar. It's nowhere as glitchy. You don't have to tap and drag to adjust anything. It's literally just tap to adjust, just like if you were pressing the actual keys. I haven't found any issue with it in terms of actual functionality. My only complaint really, and this is just me nitpicking, it doesn't have forwards and backwards tracks for music. It just has this pause and play button, right? I'm just so used to having that, but really that's not really much of an actual complaint. The only other adjustment really is getting used to having to tap the escape key again, but I was able to adapt to that pretty quickly. But the question is why, right? Why did they remove a physical row of function keys and why did they put in this touch row instead? And it basically comes down to a better cooling system. So when they removed that, they were able to place a much bigger fan slash cooling system to help manage that 28 watt P-series chip that is pretty much the main selling point of the Dell XPS 13 Plus. And as somebody who's edited 
multiple videos on this already, I can say that it is a very small compromise to the amount of power you're getting in this ultra slim ultra book. But let's circle back real quick to the keyboard and trackpad. So for the keyboard, like I said earlier, you do get a unique design where it's stretched all the way out. It's taking up all this space. Also, there isn't any space in between the keys. It looks great, but it was a little concerning to me at first, but don't worry, it doesn't make it a bad keyboard. Typing on this is actually a really good experience. I've typed the past few video scripts on this and I haven't found a single problem. I will say that there is an adjustment period, but in about 10 to 15 minutes, you're gonna be back to your regular typing speed. Now, this is a backlit keyboard and you can adjust the lighting modes on the touch row. There are three modes. So the first one has no lights at all. The second one is a very weak and dim light. And the third is the brightest, but it's not really that bright, but yeah, it gets the job done. You'll be able to use it in darker rooms. And for the trackpad, it's actually been a really good experience. I haven't really had a lot of um, good experiences with Windows trackpads, but even coming from a MacBook Pro, the experience has been great. I haven't found any hiccups when I was going through like different websites and of course, editing videos. It also comes with haptic motors, which will also help you navigate where the trackpad is because this has no visible outline for it. But don't worry, it's actually a pretty big trackpad. Your muscle memory definitely won't fail you there. So the experience is a 10 over 10 overall. It's very new and it actually performs great. So the display configuration that I got was the full HD plus touch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. I didn't opt for the 3.5K OLED, even though I know that the colors on that would be much better, but this is a small laptop, right? It's a 13 inch laptop. So this should still be plenty sharp and the color should still be relatively good. Also, in terms of battery life, the 3.5K OLED model will definitely drain the life out of your battery pretty much immediately. I've heard so many things about that. And if I'm being honest, the battery life on this isn't so great already. So I don't even wanna see what that looks like. In terms of the touch functionality, I'm just not a big fan of touch. Honestly, it's just, it's okay. It's not that big a deal. I usually use my trackpad and my mouse, but it is nice. Like when you're scrolling, you can just do that or you can pinch in for photos. So it is a nice feature to have, but it's definitely not necessary. So overall the display of the full HD plus, it's great. You get those ultra thin bezels that XPS laptops are known for and it looks like it's floating it's really really thin i don't know how dell does it they've been doing this for years and it just looks fantastic the macbook pros haven't even caught up to this level of thinness when it comes to the displays and it's amazing but yeah it's plenty sharp you get very good colors you get up to 500 nits of brightness so this gets plenty bright so you don't have to worry about using it outside my only gripe really and this is again just another nitpicking thing is the 60 hertz display but given its price point it's fine also as of making this video all xps laptops including its bigger brothers the 15 and 17 are all using 60 hertz displays so yeah i can't really complain and as for the speakers as you can see there is no visible speaker grill so they're actually shooting up from the keyboard and personally i was a little disappointed with these speakers because i've been so spoiled by my macbook pro 14s um, but i tried to be a little more objective and they actually are great sounding speakers they're great they're just not the best so let's do a little sound test about the 
support situation, which is one of the more controversial aspects of this laptop. So you get two USB-C ports, one on each side, one on the left and one on the right. And that's normal, right? That's fine. We've seen that kind of setup with MacBook Airs, not a big deal. But the Dell XPS 13 Plus is missing one thing, and that's a headphone jack. So they went ahead and removed the headphone jack, which I thought was really weird. I mean, they do include a dongle in the box, but yeah, I understand that a lot of people are investing more and more into their Bluetooth headphones and earbuds, but a lot of people still use wired headphones, even intentionally, because when you're editing a video and you're editing the overall track to music and beats, you don't want any kind of delay. So yeah, um, I think it was weird, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker for me since I am usually using Bluetooth earbuds. Connection wise, it's fine. Sometimes it connects automatically. Sometimes I have to dive into the menu and select it manually. But yeah, the weirdest thing for me though, is that I thought they removed the headphone jack to make room for the better cooling system, right? But they released the regular XPS 13 a few weeks ago and it doesn't have a headphone jack either. So it seems like Dell is just doing that for fun. <laughs> All right, let's talk performance. Does that 28 watt P series chip actually hold up? And I'm gonna start by saying that I watched a few reviews on YouTube on the 1240p chip as well as the maxed out 1280 chip. And there were a lot of benchmarks being thrown around and that's fine. I know a lot of people wanna see that as well. And it is nice to see in numbers how well a device has improved, right? But, but what really irked me is when somebody said, forget about editing 4K videos on the base model. And I was like, I just did though. Like I literally edited four 4K videos. Some of them have three different camera angles, all shot in 4K. So it's like, what are you talking about? I was able to edit that smoothly, like 95% of the time. You do get some drop frames every now and then, but that's fine. It recovers immediately. I was able to play back everything at a full resolution, which is wow. So yeah, benchmarks aren't everything. But in all seriousness, I have been using this as my main computer for the past three weeks. I've done everything from web browsing to media consumption and of course, photo and video editing. So I can say that this laptop has exceeded my expectations, especially, especially in video editing. So let's go ahead and open up a timeline and I'll show you what my usual tech videos usually look like. Okay, let's load up one of my recent videos. This is my Tab S8 accessories video. And this is a pretty simple timeline. I don't have that many angles going on. So I have this A-roll shot, right? So that's just me shot in 4K. And then of course I'm gonna have like these titles. So these graphics and my graphics aren't that intense. I just mask it and then add some keyframes and then I just adjust the, the speed, the velocity of that to make it a little smoother. So there's that, back to the A roll. So when I'm talking about something, I always overlay any kind of B roll to get you know, the point across to show them what I'm actually talking about. So there's that. So these are two layers of 4K being uh, layered on top of each other. And it's playing back perfectly at full resolution. So I just wanna keep bringing that up because back then I always had to step everything down to one fourth or even one eighth of the resolution. So it's nice that this can do that. And I can jump from one point to another zero latency and it's not dropping any frames. It's doing a great job. So yeah, also I'm unplugged right now. So that's, that's nice. <laughs> But yeah, this is a pretty simple timeline. Let's go um, open something a little more intense. So this one is my M2 MacBook Air unboxing. And as you can see, I have my, my A-roll shot. So there's that. And then I'm gonna have my top-down shot. And I'm gonna have my second angle. So that's three layers of 4K kind of just stacked on top of each other and it's playing back with no dropped frames either. We're just, it's super smooth, really love that. So the editing experience on the Dell XPS 13 Plus is gonna be great. 
Also, it's dead silent right now. It is for the most part, like any kind of task you're doing that's normal, like web browsing or watching content, it's gonna be silent. But sometimes this is gonna get a little warm, which is normal. So the fans are gonna kick in, but it's very subtle. It's not blasting or anything. The only time it does get loud is when you're exporting. And export times is actually pretty good, but this is when you're gonna want to plug your laptop in because that's when you'll get the best times. Usually this 12.5 minute video will export in about seven to 10 minutes when I'm plugged in. So right now it says, oh, see, it says five minutes. Wow. And again, I'm not even plugged in. So that's very interesting. So I don't do a lot of photo editing on my laptop. I usually use my tablet for that, but I did post a video that had street photography in it. And I thought, why not edit a few photos on the Dell XPS 13 plus? And unsurprisingly, it did great. My editing workflow is not crazy on photos because I just tweak things here and there, but yeah. The Dell XPS 13 plus is capable of light photo editing, but I'm sure it can do more extensive stuff than what I do. Now in terms of battery life, this one is okay. It's just okay, especially when you compare it to the new MacBooks um, in the past two years. But when you have everything maxed out, like the brightness, of course, it's gonna drain really easily. Like it will die in about two hours. But if you have it like dimmed down like halfway through, this will last you around five to seven, maybe eight max if you're just doing light tasks. But of course, if you're doing more CPU intensive tasks like video editing or gaming, two, two hours, maybe three max, but yeah, it's not great, but it's also not that bad. I feel like it is respectable for most Windows Ultrabooks. So would I recommend the Dell XPS 13 Plus? Yes, yes I would. I think it's a great alternative to MacBooks, but even MacBooks aside, this is a great Ultrabook, just fantastic. It's gonna be great for photo editing, video editing, and just productivity tasks in general. You get a beautiful looking laptop. Like look at the design on this thing, like what? It's definitely a head turner, you get a great display. Now it isn't perfect, definitely has drawbacks like, mediocre battery life and not having a headphone jack, but you can't really have it all, right? And also this is only just the base model. So if you wanted more power, you can splurge a little more and get that 1280p chip with 14 cores. So yeah, that is pretty much that for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys have any questions about the Dell XPS 13 plus, feel free to leave a comment down below. So yeah great laptop. I will see you guys in the next video.